you guys hear me okay? Wow, I'm too loud. This is probably better. Um, so hello everyone, I'm really excited to be here today. Um, I'm sorry that this will be in English, but I think most people either speak English or will have the, the translation. Uh, let me tell you quickly who I am. So my name is Amina, I run platform partnerships at Facebook for essentially Eastern Europe, Turkey, Middle East, and Africa. Pretty broad region. What it means is that I spend my time on a plane. <laughs> so um, technically I live in Paris, but I'm actually on a plane most of the time. So um, you might ask, I am, I'm not an investor, um, I'm not an entrepreneur, so what am I doing here, right? Probably asking yourselves, you know, what's, uh, what, what, is, what is she gonna talk to us about? So the idea is, you know, I work with investors a fair bit and I work with startups a fair bit. Um, and while I don't have sort of words of wisdom necessarily, what I do want to share with you is maybe something that's a little bit more pragmatic. And that is, how do you actually grow and scale your business? How do you harness what Facebook has done um, over the last eight years? So not really a startup anymore. Um, but over the last eight years, Facebook has built close to 845 million users. And as you think, as startups and as investors, as you think about advising companies or building things, how do you leverage this platform? So I'll tell you, hopefully I won't spend too much time uh, on slides, so I'll tell you a little bit about what's possible on the timeline app side, and then I'll open up the forum so that you can ask me questions. Um, and I'll be here for the next two days, so hopefully this is really just the beginning of a dialogue um, with all of you on how you can use Facebook. Make sense? Yeah, sound okay? All right. Let's go ahead and get started. So um, a few years ago, maybe sort of I'd say maybe 10 years ago, um, the internet was all about you know, a very specific thing that you were looking for. You would go, you knew exactly what you wanted, you would go search for it, you would find it, um, and that was sort of the experience, right? It was really very much about search. Um, it was also about sort of an experience that was very similar, whether you, know, you were Amina or whether you were Burak, right? Regardless of your interests, if you went to yahoo.com or if you went to cnn.com, it was the same experience. I think today we're starting to see, uh, and we probably have seen for some time now, a real transition from that perspective. And what you have now is a bunch of people who are logged in, right, at all times. Um, on Facebook is sort of one example, but really on other sites as well. And so you have a much more personal experience. So today, you know, if, if you look over his shoulder and look at his Facebook page, it's probably not very interesting because it's not yours, right? There's not anything that is true to what you're doing. Um, and so the reality is we've seen really an evolution here in terms of social design, how you actually put people at the middle or at the center of what you're actually trying to create. And so if you think about sort of the, the Facebook platform, it started in 2007. And the reality of what happened then is that, you know, we were a very small team uh, based in Palo Alto. And the idea was we can't build all of the experiences that you could build on the Facebook platform. We knew we weren't going to be the ones to really win in music. We realized we weren't really going to be the ones to uh, build all the right games. We couldn't do all these things. And so we said, you know, let's open it up and let's allow others to build on the platform. That evolved um, over time into sort of Facebook Connect. Um, and so now you have people like Amazon and smaller companies as well using all of that information that you've put into Facebook to customize and create a more personal experience on that shopping site or on that news site or whatever the case may be. Sorry. Um, what you saw then next is the rise of the first major sort of vertical, and that was games. Um, so they spent you know, a year, year and a half, really sort of thinking about what you could actually build that was interesting on the Facebook platform. Um, they really figured out the viral channels, how do you actually you know, engage within a game and start to connect with your friends around a specific activity. Um, and so you saw the rise of folks like Zynga, um, folks like Wuga more recently, uh, others like King.com, and in Turkey, players like Peak, for example, um, who have done extraordinarily well, sort of starting small, but really understanding how you tap into the social element of building a game. Next was the like button, um, which has been a very interesting sort of tool. It's a very, very simple tool. You can put it on just about anything. Um, and today what you see is you have essentially billions of likes or comments per day, 
Um, so on a variety of things, whether that's on Facebook or on third-party sites. And now we're at a stage where we've actually just launched this thing called Timeline. Um, so let me just check. How many of you guys have the new Timeline? Okay, maybe about 40%. Um, so it's actually now publicly available. Initially, we made it available to developers. In December, we made it available to just about everybody else. So hopefully, most of you guys will be getting it very soon. And the interesting thing here is, so Timeline is really a user-focused sort of uh, tool or world. Um, with Timeline apps, we're allowing developers to help a user build out their interest graph, things that are interesting to them. So I'll tell you a little bit more about that. So this is my timeline. Um, we spent the last year, really, thinking about timeline. So it is, um, it's something that we spend a lot of time sort of aesthetically, just spending a lot of time thinking about how do we make it beautiful? How do you sort of create an experience that allows you to not just have the first five minutes of a conversation? So if you think about the old profile, it was, who am I? You know, am I single or am I married? And what school did I go to? And that's it, right? first maybe three minutes of a conversation. Timeline really allows you to kind of get to the next hour, two hours of a conversation. You can go all the way back to when I was born. You'll see that the date is not on there <laughs> for obvious reasons. But um, the idea is you could really go back and start to highlight the things that matter to you. Um, so you can tell stories from a, from a sort of, you can add pictures about your graduation or your first child or your wedding or, you know, it, really anything that matters to you. And so it becomes less about all the little things that you do and more the really important big things. So that's all nice. And I can put pictures and I can put check-ins and I can do things like that. But really what you want is to start to add real activity to that timeline. Um, and this is where you guys come in, right? This is where startups come in. This is where investors who are working with startups come in, which is how do you build experiences that allow a user to express who they are? So I listen to a lot of music, right? It's a big part of who I am. And so by building a timeline app, I'm able to express to my friends what I like, what I'm listening to. Not just because I've actively liked it, but because I'm on Spotify or I'm on Deezer and I'm listening to the music right then and there. And that's what I'm able to broadcast to my friends. So that's nice. We've seen, you know, in, um, in the month of September, which is when we launched, we saw a lot of uh, news apps go live with this. We saw a lot of video um, apps go live with this. So Isle Sene, have you guys used the timeline app on Isle Sene? Nope, that will change, hopefully, <laughs> very soon. So music, video, and news. Those were the really big things that, um, that we saw initially. In January, we opened it up so that you can do anything you want, not just read, uh, read watch, and listen. You could really do anything at all. So Pinterest, um, which is something that's really been taking off uh, really globally, but I think uh, probably at this point, especially in the US, you can now pin something. So you're on Pinterest or you're on a site and you can use their plugin, their little social plugin. Um, and essentially what happens is you authorize the application once and every time you pin something, that gets published back to your, um, to your timeline. And it gets published in a few different places. I'll show you, I'll show you how that actually works. And the idea here is that you want to just sort of tell people who you are, right? You want to express what matters to you. So if you're a runner, you're going to use the Nike application and say, I just ran, you know, 25 miles, um, you know, in San Francisco or in Antalya. Um, if you, the, the, you know, if you are a knitter, you'll talk about knitting. There's a food application. So you can say, I'm craving this dish or I just ate this dish. Um, it's also about discovery. So initially, I was a little skeptical about this. So when I looked at sort of all the stuff that my friends were reading, I said, do I really want to read everything that, like, is that really going to be a big deal? And the reality is I'm discovering stuff that I never would have read otherwise. Um, so not necessarily in the ticker, which is the real-time activity, but when it starts to get aggregated into, um, into interesting stories. So now I see that 10 of my friends have just read an article about the Facebook IPO. I'm going to go check it out. Um, so the idea is you can start to discover new things, although that one probably wasn't new for me, but um, <laughs> you could see sort of what are the things that are picking up um, with your friends. So let me just, I won't get technical, I promise, so it'll be really high level, but I did want to just kind of give you a sense for what the basics are. So you've got the user, you've got an action, and the action is something that you can design. You can design it in any language. 
So it starts off in English. You decide you know, what verb, what action you guys want to take in your application. So if it's a food application, it's about, you know, I cooked something or I cra I'm craving something. If it's a running app, as I was saying, it's, it's I ran. Um, here I'll give you an example of a movie application where I'm rating movies. And so you define the action, you define the object itself, and the user is obviously the, the, the sort of the, the Facebook user in this particular case. And the idea is that, you know, you can create any verb you want within reason. So obviously there are some verbs that are going to be off limits, um, as you can imagine. So I always get the question of, you know, can I say I don't like something, right? Can I create a verb that is sort of negative in some way? Um, and so those are the kinds of things that probably are not necessarily conducive to creating distribution or virality. Um, so really what we look for are things that users are doing with your application anyway, right? So if you go to Rotten Tomatoes, which is, a, which is a review site, what you do on that site is rate. So that's what you want to publish back to uh, Facebook, either in the ticker or in the newsfeed or in the timeline aggregation. So in this case, the idea is you create the action. Um, you can add a specific sort of user message so that it makes it a little bit more personal. Um, and then you have the object, and you want to make sure you have a picture so that it's really engaging. And so what happens is essentially you have the very simple action that says Amina rated Slumdog Millionaire. Very simple. That happens in Ticker. Ticker is what you see at the top right um, of, your, of your new Facebook timeline. You have it in Newsfeed, um, and you also have sort of a Rotten Tomatoes application, what we call a, a sort of a timeline aggregation. And so when you go on the timeline, which is what I was showing you earlier, you see everything that I did on Rotten Tomatoes. The idea here is that you have control as a user. So this is really important for everybody to understand. Um, the idea is that you can, you give authorization to the application, and it tells you here's what we're going to use, um, and then it publishes back. But if you decide, you know what, I actually don't want to share, you know, this particular article that I just read, you can remove it. Um, you can remove it within the developer's application, you can remove it on Facebook, um, and you can remove it entirely. Decide I never want, you know, the Guardian to share what I'm reading. So there's a lot of control at an activity level and then at an application level for the user. So this is another sort of area that I think folks ask a lot of questions about, which is, well, where can I do it? So there's a misconception that in order for you to use a timeline application, you have to build something on Facebook. You don't. Um, you can actually do it on your own website. So if you're a new site and you get a lot of traffic on your own site, you don't necessarily want to go build something on the Facebook, uh, on the Facebook canvas, as we call it. You can decide to do it on your own site. Um, Spotify, for example, did not build a Facebook application. They have their own client. And so the, the integration that they worked on was one that allowed them to really do this on their own. Mobile, there's a lot of guys who just do mobile. This is, a, again, something else that you can actually do just on, just on your mobile site. So the idea here is that you can choose to do this any way that is right for your business. Um, and there are no sort of special deals. I often get this question, which is, well, what did Spotify do to be able to really work with you guys so closely? And what did, you know, the Washington Post do to see as much growth? Um, and the reality is all of these tools are available to you right now. So you can literally, actually as I speak, <laughs> go into developers.facebook.com and actually build this for yourself right now. All of these tools are available. There's an approval process to make sure that the, the action that you use is one that we're okay with. But apart from that, it actually is entirely, entirely open and entirely up to you what you actually want to build here. Um, so the, the question then becomes, so this is nice for the user, right? You get all of this value as a user. Why is it good for developers or for startups um, to really think about? And the idea here is that it gives you distribution. At the end of the day, your sort of the, the, the name of the game here, um, when you're actually starting off and really looking to scale and see that, that effect, um, that one, gets you money, uh, which I think is, is an important piece of the equation, and two, really gets you traction with your users. Um, so the name of the game is really acquisition. How do you get more users to be exposed to what you're doing? And two, once they are exposed, how do you get them engaged? How do you keep them coming back to your application in a way that's interesting um, and keeps them involved, essentially? So that's really the two things that I think you know, any startup should really be focused on. And so OpenGraph does exactly that. So it gives you access to 
millions of people across these three tools that I described, so newsfeed and timeline and ticker. Um, it allows you to really re-engage with people. Um, and then you have a way to connect with your friends on a given experience. And that we've seen has really proven out to be um, sort of a, a major enabler of growth. So this is nice. Let's speak numbers, right? What, what, what exactly does this mean in terms of you know, what folks are actually trying to do? So Yahoo, not a startup, I grant you, but to give you a sense of what they've done just in the last three months, they've had 25 million people who've actually installed their Yahoo application. Again, this is not on Facebook, it's on yahoo.com. You can authorize um, essentially a connection, right, through this timeline app to, uh, to Facebook and you're able to broadcast and share what you're actually reading. And two million people are using it daily. This is pretty big. Um, you've got some other companies, right, like Rockmelt, for example, and they're getting sort of a 20% increase in new traffic and new users to the site. So the way this works is I, you know, am on Rockmelt, actually see something that gets published on my ticker, on my timeline, and one of my friends, who is not a Rockmelt user, sees it and goes to check it out. Guardian, um, again, not a startup, but not a company that had honestly been very, um, sort of hadn't seen a lot of traction with the younger audiences. So what they did is they went um, and actually built a Canvas application. So this sits within Facebook. They've had five million people install it, and they've seen a huge increase in essentially folks from 24 to 35 who weren't interacting that much with the Guardian. All of these people are now coming to the Guardian and being able to engage. Um, fab.com. Have you guys heard of Fab? It's a home, yeah, home design uh, sort of private shopping site, I guess I would call it. Um, and these guys have seen a 50% increase in traffic uh, from Facebook from doing exactly this. So you could say Amina just bought, you know, this chair on Fab.com. My friend sees it, thinks I have good taste, will go click on it and actually check it out as well. And hopefully this then translates into incremental sales. Um, Foodily, tiny little um, a company that's also doing what I was describing earlier, which is this food app, they've seen a 4x increase in new users. So what I'm trying to show you here is not necessarily list off impressive statistics, it's really about giving you a sense for why both really, really small companies as well as pretty major ones, um, by investing their sort of resources essentially in building something like this, um, they're actually seeing some pretty massive results. And so, you know, you even have people like MySpace who um, are now using this um, and are able to see traction again. They're seeing growth for the first time in years um, as a result of this, which is interesting. Um, the other thing I'll mention, just because I think this is probably um, going to resonate a fair bit with the, with the folks in the room, and that is Sneak Peek, tiny little shopping site. They've just been able to raise close to $3 million from Bain Cap and others by doing this. They implemented this. They saw that, that sort of tipping point where you start to see growth, and folks are like, oh, this is interesting. Let me go and invest. So it's a way to really jumpstart your acquisition. Um, and once you have that sort of that set of users, you can really start to scale and engage them in deeper ways. So what I'll do just before I wrap um, is kind of give you a sense for what are some of the best practices. Because at this stage, we have hundreds of apps, right, that are building uh, this way. And there are thousands that are um, you know, building every day and looking to get approved. Some things work, some things don't work as well. So um, the, the idea here is that what you want to do as you start thinking about this is start with your existing audience. Don't create something and think you're going to go after a brand new audience that you've never touched before. Start with folks that you know um, have a good reason to add your application to their timeline. Um, there are some things that are very well suited to this. Media, uh, everything that is, I guess, lifestyle applications probably falls in this category. Um, there are things that just don't make sense, right? There are things you just don't want to share on your, on your timeline application. So if you think about healthcare, probably not, you don't necessarily want people to know kind of what you're reading up on from a health standpoint. Um, you know, maybe financial, sort of checking things like that, finance in general, maybe not something that you want to do, although there could be interesting niches like investing, where maybe you do want to tell people how good you are at picking stocks, I don't know. Um, so the key is really to think about what does your application do how do you make sure that you start with your existing audience and then give them a good reason to actually start doing this? Why would I share? It's because it becomes more interesting because I'm discovering new things. Second thing is design your actions so that they're interesting. It probably sounds really basic, but you'd be surprised the number of 
um, applications or submissions that we see where it's just not that rel it's not that exciting or interesting. So what happens is, you know, it just says, here's the 10 things I did, you know, in this application. Eh, okay. If there's no pictures, if there's not a personal commentary, if there's not a way to kind of associate that with, you know, what my friends are doing, it's probably not that exciting. And then the last thing is just make it really easy for people to start sharing so that you can actually start to see that viral loop. We take care of a fair bit of that, so we take care of distribution for you on the ticker, on the news feed, and then from a timeline um, standpoint. But the reality is there is a lot of things that you, Ula. there's a lot of things that you can do as well to really help um, uh, continue to increase that viral loop. So on your application, encourage people to invite their friends. These are things that I think most folks who have built on the Facebook platform understand very well. Um, and if you haven't built on the Facebook platform, then these are things that are pretty well documented um, on developers.facebook.com. So feel free, that's kind of the Bible for us, so we spend a lot of time there. Um, and I'd recommend you take a look. So that's it. I didn't want to bore you guys with too much. Um, and really the idea here is just to show you sort of the, the, the next evolution for the Facebook platform, which is this, which is timeline applications and allow you guys to ask me questions. Um, and also, as I said, I'm here for the next two days. So the, the point is not necessarily to try to squeeze them all in right now, although feel free to you know, ask as many as we have time for. Um, and then what we'll do is actually spend some time over the next couple of days um, talking about this, mobile, um, gaming. There's a, really a lot of different things on the Facebook platform, so happy to engage. Questions? Questions? Yes. Hello. Hi. Uh, Gülay Özkan. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, you are in a role that uh, where you, you see the big picture in the market, as well as you are in a region role. Uh, so from big picture pers perspective, yeah. uh, what are the key trends you recommend to developers? Very specifically, I mean, what are the, do you think, the next popular trends that the developers should uh, follow? Sure, sure. Um, so you're right. I mean, I, I spend a fair amount of time in country, um, in the countries that I just described. Um, so, you know, I see actually a few different, I'll, I'll give you sort of two types of trends. One is on sort of product um, and what are folks doing from that perspective. And I'll also give you some interesting perspectives on what's happening in terms of country expansion. So. Um, from a product perspective, I think what we're really, really starting to see, and this is true across gaming, it's true across um, uh, commerce, it's true across the board, mobile, 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 mobile. You can't um, really sort of think about starting a business these days without having a true mobile strategy that's front and center to what you're doing. Um, what I see is that a lot of companies sort of will start working on a concept, it's very sort of desktop focused, and they okay, and now what's my mobile strategy? Now how do I start to, you know, either on the mobile web or sort of native applications, let me kind of translate what I have into that. Um, I think the successful companies that I see are really pushing forward on that. They're investing um, time and resources in sort of thinking through how to do that. Um, from a Facebook perspective, just so you guys have a sense, all the stuff that you build on Facebook, um, we have this thing called the mobile platform. So everything that you build, all of the bookmarks that you get, all the social notification channels, all of those things are available on mobile. So you can, in fact, you know, all you have to do is check a box in your, uh, in your sort of development process uh, within Facebook, and you actually get all of those same things on the mobile side. So these are things that I would say probably that's probably the biggest one uh, that I would focus on. The, the regional trend that I would mention that I um, that I'm finding more and more interesting is the extent to which uh, companies in uh, the US, companies in Latin America, companies in China actually as well, are looking to Turkey to think about you know, how, to ex how to expand. Um, we see it a lot from a gaming standpoint, so we get a lot of requests saying, you know, we build really interesting games, we want to extend into Turkey, how do we do that? Who can we talk to? So there's a real sort of strong, strong interest in extending here, and the other one is actually um, the Middle East. So the Arabic-speaking sort of part of um, part of the region is also becoming a really sort of significant market from a Facebook standpoint um, and from a gaming standpoint. Uh, and so again, that's an area where I see a lot of interest. Uh, would, it, <coughs> excuse me, would it be possible even be 
more specific, for example, in mobile? Sure. Um, so there's a few things. I mean, I think that the, the topic that a lot of folks are, um, are talking a lot about right now is HTML5 and thinking about, you know, how do I start to think about building on mobile but cross-platform? Um, I think depending on the area that you're in, you'll find that this is um, sort of ready and mature in some areas and not so ready in others. Um, so, you know, I have a, an example of a company in Germany called Wuga that is a social uh, gaming company that's done very, very well. And they've actually done a lot on mobile, on HTML5, um, and they say, you know, the platform is almost ready for gaming. Not quite, but almost. Um, they do a lot on iOS, they do a lot on Android, I mean, they do across the board, mobile web. Those guys are really um, all over and have been quite successful. Um, and so the key, I think, from a mobile perspective, so think about HTML5, there's no question. I mean, that's, that's really sort of, from a forward-looking standpoint, probably where you want to invest. Right now, it's probably not there yet for a lot of different things that you would want to build. Um, and so it's a matter of kind of balancing, essentially, short-term versus mid-term uh, focus. Uh, my name is Bülent from Tübsel, uh, which is the market leader in GSM communication in Turkey. Mm -hmm. uh, my question is about the, uh, your collaboration with Seedcam. I'm not sure if you're aware of that. Uh, have you already started to harvest something from that collaboration with Seedcamp and should we expect uh, some similar cooperation with uh, similar entities in Turkey like uh, Girishin Publicas or Etohum? And also do you have some uh, similar or similar plans to cooperate with the mobile operators considering zero.com, uh, zero.facebook.com? Zero um, so on the, on the first question, which is, you know, how do we actually work with startups and, and what are we doing with Seedcamp and others, um, the idea here is that we, the way we think about it is we have one job uh, in the platform team. It's either to make um, social companies big or big companies social. And the more fun part, to be honest, is social companies big, right? So how do you take companies who really get it? Um, really understand how to integrate to sort of Facebook and help them scale, which is a lot of what I was talking about. And so what we do is actually spend a lot of time um, with startups to help advise them, right? We'll actually cherry pick guys that we think really understand and we really help them scale, giving them partner engineering support, giving them uh, guidance from a strategy standpoint, connecting them eventually if, if the need comes up uh, with investors. Um, and so there's a fair amount of work that we do, although probably less formally than um, maybe sort of other, other programs or other things that, that you've seen. I think the intent from our perspective is to continue to do that. That's why I'm here. Um, I'm here to really sort of invest um, my time and my energy with all of you to really think about, you know, how do you take whatever it is that you're working on to the next level? Um, so yes, I guess is the short answer to your question. We will spend more and more time um, with folks who are building interesting, new, exciting interactions. Um, that's really what, what we're after and what we'll continue to spend time on. There is a high penetration of Facebook in Turkey. Mm -hmm. And when, when are you planning to open an office or invest in Turkey? So uh, at this point, we are, and I've, I've gotten this no, question. No, 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 there was a question over okay. there. <laughs> We've gotten uh, uh, several questions on this. I mean, I think at this stage, we have. Um, a fair number of people at Facebook were focused on Turkey. So we've got um, folks in Dublin who look after essentially everything that's ads focused. So as you look to spend um, on the sort of the, on Facebook from an advertising standpoint, we've got a team that, that um, is based in Dublin but spends a lot of time here actually. Um, same thing actually on the sort of the, the larger advertiser side. Uh, we just had somebody join the team uh, a month ago actually. Um, who will be spending a lot of time, uh, you know, he's based in London, but will be spending a lot of time here. So I think, you know, I don't have an exact date for when, and then there's me, obviously, that, that is here practically every month. Um, so there isn't a date necessarily on when we'll open an office, um, but I think that, you know, you'll see that the, the, the team really spends a fair amount of time here. We are very excited about this market, and I just can't wait to see sort of what comes out, hopefully even of, of this room uh, as, uh, as, we, as we leave. And the more we see, the more we'll spend time here. So it's up to you. Uh, do these uh, new open graph features work in users who uh, haven't migrated to the new timeline? So the, um, the rollout of timeline now is, is sort of 
well engaged is probably not complete. Um, what you have right now is ticker um, and the news feed. So those are all things that you see, right? Um, you see those aggregations and you see those experiences regardless. Um, I think the, the timeline aggregations you don't see. Okay. Yeah. And when will you force a timeline to all users? Um, so there will come a point where sort of everybody migrates over. We're giving people time, to be honest, to sort of make that decision um, and give them the time. So when you actually get that marketing splash um, that says, do you want to migrate to timeline, we give you seven days. You want to go in and make sure that all your photos are sort of ones that you actually want to share in the way that they're posted today. There's just a fair amount of curation that you want to allow the user to have before you push everybody through. So we'll always allow some time for users to do that. Um, so in the, coming, in the coming weeks and months, I think you'll see most people shift over. Thank you. Sure. Good luck. Just, just uh, to My name is Kurtu from WeDecide, mm -hmm. we're innovation uh, management software. What can we expect in the future from uh, Facebook credits and also um, Facebook pages for brands and corporates? So um, around credits, so for, for folks who um, haven't actually used this uh, on, on the platform, essentially what credits are essentially are, are virtual currency. So it is a payment system that allows developers who are building interesting games on the platform to monetize. Um, and to then cash out. Um, so the, the revenue split, so folks are aware, is 30-70. So 70 to the developer and 30% to Facebook. Um, and so that system is one that everybody who built a game on the Facebook platform migrated to on July 1st um, of last year, so in 2011. Um, a lot of these sort of games have seen um, an increase, right, in, in volume as a result of this because you know, you buy credits to play a particular game um, and you decide, you know, you can actually use it just about anywhere else. So we've seen a fair amount um, of lift and I think for folks who've looked at the S1, there are actually now numbers um, on how much uh, that generates for, for Facebook. So um, it, is a, it is a really important piece of the equation because you, the idea really is to say, distribution is a good first step, but at the end of the day, really what we want to be doing is sending you guys checks or in this case, you know, wiring you money at the end of every month. We want you guys to monetize, um, and this has been true right now of gaming applications. I think you'll see it in other areas as well. Um, we really want to sort of create a model where we're able to not only sort of send you all of this, all of this distribution and this engagement, which is very, very important, and then also help you monetize. Um, and so that is really what the thinking is behind uh, the, the Facebook credits sort of solution and how we think about payments in general. It's really about making it very, very easy for you to pay. So we will add as many payment methods um, as users need and want in any given market to make that very efficient. And we will make it very easy, very easy for you to actually convert um, so that we can help you monetize. What was your second question? I'm sorry. So we're not, uh, we're not yet sharing anything around that. So at this stage, you know, as we think about, um, uh, as we think about what we're doing, it's from a platform perspective at the very least, it's very much focused on what I described, which is um, you know, a timeline for users and ways in which they can engage with these apps um, across sort of media and lifestyle in general. Um, so there's not much that, that, that we can share at, at this stage on that particular question. Um, sorry, Amina. Um, Where? Back Where are here. you? Where are you? I can't. I'm here. Please. Please. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, back to the question before in terms of uh, um, how many people are in the office that's overseeing this whole region uh, in addition to you? From what perspective? Uh, staff. How many employees? So there's, a, there's platform and there's ads, total, right? Total number of Facebook staff overlooking Middle East, uh, MENA, North Africa, uh, the whole region. So I, I don't actually have the exact number because there's a fair number. There's developer support and there's ads and there's me and there's so there's a there's a number. But, but tell me where terms, you're going with it. I'll tell you because <laughs> no no I, I I've 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 been in the telecom world. Yeah. And it's always the same problem. Um, you know the company I was representing has about 50 million subscribers. It was almost impossible to convince Google to have Nexus being released in the MENA region. It was almost impossible to convince Microsoft to release their Microsoft phone. And I'm just asking you, I know you are going to defend Microsoft, but, um, uh, sorry, my, Facebook, but in terms of proportion, the number of Facebook users 
and the revenues that are coming from the region you represent and the budgets allocated, are they proportional? Do you think it's fair? Or do you think there should be more um, attention coming from Facebook to this region in proportion to the amount of users and money or potential that exists? Yeah, so the reality is we are at a stage now where international in general, um, whether it's my region or if I think about the APAC region, which is experiencing a lot of growth, where we're seeing um, you know, an increasing amount of both users, which um, I think makes a lot of sense, but then also sort of you know, advertisers actually spending time and platform partners spending time. Um, not enough, in my opinion, so I'd love to see more of that, especially on the platform side, because that's what, that's what I look after. I want to see you know, the big companies really building interesting and engaging things and being successful on the platform. Um, but I think that the, the idea is I'm here as an advocate right, of sort of this region and of the startups here and of the larger companies here in, uh, inside of Facebook. So the idea is you know, my sort of goal or what I focus on is making sure that your voice is heard. Um, and so that's why it's important for me to spend time here. That's why I'm working with you guys very closely. It's because I want to make sure that as time evolves, we're actually spending the, the right amount of time. Right now, when you look at, look at it from a platform perspective, there is a lot of traction in the gaming space. We spend a lot of time with our gaming partners in the region, whether that's in the Middle East, whether that's in, um, uh, in Turkey. In Eastern Europe, that's starting, not quite yet. Africa is still probably still early days. So the more I see, um, the more I can then go back and actually sort of get even more traction and more sort of um, investment essentially in the region. So that's really what it comes down to. The more I see, the more I'll become an advocate and a more vocal advocate um, because you guys will be doing great things. Hi, yeah. uh, my name is Ufuk Kayserlioğlu and I'm representing Enkuba. I'm the managing director of a Turkish startup Accelerator. Uh, my question is about uh, timeline apps and open graph in general sure. uh, with the long-term vision. We can all appreciate uh, in the short term that it's very beneficial for especially small startups, these timeline apps because they increase their coverage, but uh, there are growing concerns about the long-term implications of this. Uh, there's lots of backlash on the web uh, about a growing apathy towards being bombarded from many different sources with uh, lots of updates that people didn't especially want to generate maybe in the first place. And there are some people on the web that are claiming that uh, peer-based discovery should be based on curation and not just on activities that you happen to, to make on the web. Uh, do you have any comments on this? Sure. So I think the, 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 when, when we first launched, I think there were questions around, well, you know, am I going to be spamming my friends, right? If, if they see what I'm actually doing at all times, is that going to feel spammy in some way? Um, and I think that, you know, what we've seen over time as this has evolved, right? And I mean, it's three, it's, it hasn't been six months or a year or something, uh, so it's relatively short. But essentially, here's sort of what has come out. What's come out is that um, what you see in Ticker, which is that real-time feed, some people decide that they're going to want to sort of click on it and actually go take a look at a particular article. But really, most times, what people are actually going to want to do is not necessarily spend all that much time on the Ticker, but really look at news feed aggregation. So this is what you actually see in the middle of your screen when you arrive uh, on Facebook. And that's curated, right? Because there, what you're starting to see is essentially activity that is interesting because, you know, 10 of your friends have just read an article or listened to a particular song or pinned a particular sort of photo on Pinterest or whatever the case may be. And so when you start to see those types of aggregations, this actually exists in, in games as well, right? So you see that six of your friends just played, you know, OK, for example. Um, and so that's something that becomes more significant because um, more people have actually done it and so it might be more relevant to you. Um, and so I think the reality is that the the setup as it is right now gives you all of those options. It gives you the ability to go see things that are happening in real time for those who want it. And for those who feel like that's really not that interesting, you don't have to, right? You can actually sort of focus on other things. Um, and a lot of the, I don't know if I want to call it secret sauce, but a lot of the work that we do um, is focused on thinking about what will actually be most interesting to you um, based on who your friends are, based on what your um, looking at based on what you're actively clicking on, right? And that's what will make that, that newsfeed more relevant to you over time um, and will not feel spammy. Hello, Amina. Thank you for your presentation. Um, 
I'm Sonia Memish from uh, BTS Legal Technology Consultancy. Uh, with the increasing use of Facebook, we're very interested from a security perspective what Facebook feels are going to do in the future, uh, especially in our Turkish market where quite recently one of our banks, uh, Deniz Bank, has entered the Facebook page and issuing uh, a service through Facebook. So we're, we're very interested to know what you're doing from a security perspective. Thank you. So, um, you know, obviously, as I was just describing earlier, so security control are key pieces of the overall equation in terms of, you know, what, how much control you give a user. Um, and that's really sort of the, the center of all of this. What you want to do with Open Graph and with all of this is, is provide distribution for um, applications, but do that in a safe and in a way that is very much sort of controlled. Um, so I was describing earlier all the different places that you can sort of take action um, from a timeline activity standpoint. So you can say, I don't want to show that I read this article um, or that I checked my account on, on Dennis Bank or whatever the case may be. They're not doing open graph. But um, the, there's a lot of control. I think sort of for broader security questions, you're probably not talking to the right person. Um, we've got a, a, a very qualified security team um, uh, within Facebook that works and, and looks at all of that very, very closely. I probably wouldn't do it justice. So um, I can speak to, from a platform perspective, all the things that we're doing to give users control and to make sure that experience is safe. Um, beyond that, I think it's, it's probably uh, something that uh, somebody else should speak to. But you can send me a question. I'm happy to refer to the right person. Yep. Hello. Uh, my name is Faruk, Faruk Erdogan. Uh, actually, my question is about a little bit about Pinterest. Is Pinterest is... Uh, very com complicated for me, actually, first of all. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't understand how it's uh, working at the moment. But everybody uh, pin pinning the, uh, some things uh, from anywhere to Facebook. And do you have any stats about that? Uh, do people have any idea about uh, these pins are coming from the outside of the Facebook? And um, in my opinion, most of people uh, thought that think that uh, pin is coming from the Facebook's um, application uh, coming from the Facebook actually. Uh, do you have any stats that about that? Um, people know uh, people know that uh, Pinterest is an uh, outside platform for the people actually. That's interesting. Um, I mean, I think you, you ask an interesting question, which is you know when you have an outside service um, that is not in fact uh, sort of is not a Facebook service. How do people kind of tell the difference? So there's actually a lot, um, and I'll show you just quickly. I guess in the in the previous. Um, I'm trying to remember where it was. Hold on, just give me a sec. So there will always be, so if you see, oh, I can't see this anymore. <laughs> that doesn't help anybody. Um, what happens is any activity that's actually happening um, within an application will always have the logo of the application, the name of the application, so that people are very clear um, where this activity is actually taking place. Now, I think the question that you ask also sort of um, poses, right, so if you see there on the left-hand side um, what's actually happening on Pinterest, this is a, a timeline aggregation, it says Pinterest, so it's very clear sort of where this activity is taking place. Um, I think the question that you're asking also tees up sort of a misconception, um, and that is that anybody who works on the open graph somehow should be building inside of Facebook as a Canvas application. That's not true. Um, so you could actually be doing this activity on the Pinterest site, which is the case. They don't have a Canvas application within Facebook. So all of this activity is taking place on Pinterest, but they've done this integration, right, using Open Graph and all the tools that I was describing earlier, so that that gets published back to Facebook. Um, so the idea here is that you can do it on a mobile site, you can do it, um, you can be playing a game, uh, and you pass somebody in a game. Mm -hmm. You're not on Facebook, right? You're actually mm -hmm. in an iOS app, for example, with Diamond Dash, um, a Wooga game. But that gets published back to, um, that gets published back to Facebook. So there's a distinction uh, between, and I think it's, hopefully it's pretty clear from a UI perspective how this works. Um, and from a developer perspective, I think, you know, essentially you have all of these options. You can decide how you want to engage with your users. Does that answer your question? Yes. Sort of. Different, I think so, yeah. Do you want because, to follow up? Yeah, actually, I know that, but big, uh, most, of, most of Facebook users know, uh, have no idea about uh, the Facebook games coming from the outside, from the Facebooks, actually. And in my opinion, most of Facebook users uh, think that these uh, social games are coming from the Facebooks. And because of that, uh, there are no uh, different understanding from the, uh, these games coming from the outsides and coming from the Facebook. Right. And because of that, in my, in my opinion, uh, 
actually you are responsible about uh, uh, social games, some uh, applications, uh, their tools. Uh, the Pinterest is really so interesting. They are taking off very fastly at the moment. And but I don't understand. People know that. Uh, people know that uh, this uh, application coming from the Facebook or from coming from the outside. It's so I, I just wonder about that. Do you have any stats, uh, statistics about uh, this uh, knowledge about that? Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's no stats on sort of user confusion necessarily, uh, simply because I think most people, to give the gaming example, so social games that are using Facebook credits are actually built on the Facebook platform. So those are actually sitting um, essentially within Canvas. So all of the activity that takes place there is in fact within Facebook. It's not a Facebook game. We never built any of these games, um, but these are partners who are actually building on the Facebook platform. You also have Pinterest, which is a slightly different model, right? They did not build an application within Facebook. They built an integration on their own site that publishes back to Facebook. So I get what you're saying, which is maybe users just don't understand the distinction. But I guess my, my point to that would simply be, does it matter, right? So how, how important is it that they understand where it's happening? All that matters is that they have given permission, that they're clear on what's actually happening, and they have control, and they're sharing things that are interesting. That's really all it comes down to, where it's actually happening, mobile, web, client, doesn't really matter to the user. Yeah. That would be my take. Thank you. Hello, my name is Meli Hawaf. I'm working for Endeavor, which is a, a non-profit organization to uh, support entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. My question is about, again, um, about Facebook credits. So uh, can the uh, online gaming, social gaming companies monetize their, their games without Facebook credits? If so, if not, uh, what about Zynga? So in Turkey, also Zynga has uh, game cards, so I can they can monetize without Facebook credits. What about the other companies? My question is about that. Okay, so th at this point, and as I was describing earlier, on July first, um, there sort of was a, a migration essentially to um, enable all of the developers who are actually building social games on Facebook to move to the to the payment system um, that, that Facebook uses. And I think, you know, that's something that happened a little over six months ago now. Um, and as I was saying, people have really seen a fair amount of, of volume and traction since then. Um, they, the, the idea is everybody uses that, right? Zynga, Wooga, Peak, everybody who builds social games on the Facebook platform uses um, Facebook credits and uses the payment system that, that, that we've developed, which is in fact, uh, which is in fact based on, on this virtual currency. I think the other question you're asking, which is, well, hold on, I, I'm still seeing, you know, some game cards out there. Um, there are a few uh, that, that are still out there at this stage. Um, this was a business that was, that was quite significant. I think um, the, the idea is there are now Facebook gift cards as well. Um, that are sort of available, so you can actually buy Facebook credits. Um, we haven't done that yet in Turkey, but it's available uh, in a few other markets, and it will be available soon. Um, and I think you'll see some evolution there. There's not much more I can share at this point. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So let's take last two questions. It's coming. Hi, uh, my name Hello. is Osman Doğan Yirmibeşol and I am from KTH uh, event agency. I really wonder about uh, one thing, for example, for game producers, what are the milestones that they should go over to accept, the, you know, for you to accept their games in Facebook, for example, social games? Sure, so, um, and this is true actually not just for games. Uh, Something that I think most people maybe are confused about, uh, but Facebook is actually an open platform. So the idea is that anybody, and I really mean anybody can actually build for the Facebook platform. So social, there is no screening, there is no approval process um, for social games to actually build on the platform. What we do do, however, is enforce, right? So if you have a small sort of gaming company that maybe doesn't understand um, all of the different sort of rules around how you contact users, how you use requests or permissions or all these things, uh, we'll make sure that they abide by our policy. If they're spamming users, they will get, they will, they are violating that policy. And so that happens after. But anybody can build on the, on the Facebook platform today. And that's true both for games as well as for media companies, as well as guys who are building for, for Open Graph. Um, Open Graph is, there's a slight distinction, and that is that you have to get your action that I was talking about approved so that you're not sort of, yeah, that you're not creating actions that, that we think aren't going to be sort of conducive. But it's actually very open. We have an action, just so you guys have a sense that 
um, I think food spotting or foodily came up with, which is to nom, as in to like really like something that you want to eat. So not necessarily a verb that most people um, sort of think of, but it's very open. You can really do pretty much anything um, other than sort of things that are just not appropriate. Hi, this is Fratish Vejar from uh, Positron, a mobile software company. Yep. Um, I get the impression that Facebook is trying to suck in the whole internet traffic, and while Twitter is creating traffic for other websites. Mm -hmm. Do you think in the long term this might cause a problem because Twitter's uh, content uh, websites, they like Twitter more than Facebook because it creates traffic for them, while Facebook with apps and everything is trying to suck in the traffic in its own network. So one of the things that um, I've actually just described, and maybe this didn't come through uh, in, in, the, in the discussion here, is that what we're actually doing with Open Graph is sending traffic to exactly where you want, right? So if you're a developer and you're Pinterest, for example, and what you're interested in is actually getting traffic back to Pinterest, what you're doing is leveraging the Facebook viral channels to get people to go back. Yahoo News, same thing, right? They actually built, um, uh, they built an integration that essentially starts the experience, the discovery experience on, um, on Yahoo. You share that with your friends. Friends will actually see something and go back to Yahoo to actually read it. So I guess that the idea here is that it is actually sending a tremendous amount of traffic um, outside, of, outside of Facebook. Now, I think the specific question that you asked around applications and games, yes, those are actually played within Facebook. But if you look at you know, media companies, um, which are the ones that are typically going to be working with uh, things like Open Graph, if you look at these lifestyle apps, the reality is it's not actually sending traffic to or staying within Facebook. It's actually going out. Um, and that's, that's the intent. What we want is to send that, that engagement and that user acquisition exactly where you want it. If it's mobile, it's mobile. If it's um, you know, a native app, it's a native app. If it's a, whatever it is that you actually want to do, um, and that's what I was describing earlier, I guess, with the, with the slides, is it's really the developer's choice. So, um, however, if you decide you actually want to send it, keep it within Facebook, that's your choice as well. Hello. Yes, hello. Uh, this is Murat Pak from Bagam Game Development House. Mm -hmm. uh, my question is not directly related with fa Facebook, but more of like the gaming point. What do you think about the next step or next bet good move into the uh, social gaming? Sure. So, Social gaming is actually an area that um, uh, we've just seen a tremendous amount of um, uh, sort of innovation, right? I think we, the first phase has very much been about um, sort of building, right, these city building or these farm building um, uh, activities. And that is interesting, and I think, you know, obviously those, those guys have seen a fair amount of growth. Um, what I am seeing more and more are people who actually have really interested branded content. Um, and so these are going to be big media companies that are actually bringing that to bear inside of a social game, whether that's a slots game from a casino standpoint, or um, whether that's, you know, you could imagine, you know, a fair number essentially of, of applications for that branded content. So, you know, we had a company come to us that uh, used to make um, puzzles. Very old school, very offline, not at all sort of you know, this, this um, sort of this exciting stuff that most people will, will think about, but they've actually been able to, they're working on building some really, really interesting um, social games. And so board games are huge in Turkey. Uh, board games are actually huge in the Middle East more broadly. So I guess the trend that, that I'm seeing is more and more people building um, socially and culturally relevant games um, and having those really take off in region. Uh, so I think that's probably one of the big ones. The other thing that I just haven't seen as much of, but I would love to see more, um, are, you know, some of the, there's one company called Nordius, actually, that's based out of Serbia, that's doing some really interesting sports games. But there's so much more to be done. Um, and so, you know, there are a lot of verticals like this within gaming that are probably under leveraged at this stage on Facebook, and that you could imagine, you know, doing very, very well. So. Um, for me, especially in this region, I would definitely say sports is probably one to, to think about. Um, and then, you know, games that work pretty well offline, um, they just haven't quite made it uh, to, to social yet. Thank you. Sure. Amina, thank you very much for Excellent. a marvelous speech. Uh, and thank you again that you come to here uh, and uh, join us in this startup meeting in ETO. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for uh, having me. Şimdi, evet, çok teşekkürler.